What's up, fam? Okay, so today is one of those uh, work with me day, like follow me day. Uh, today I have a 12 o'clock closing. It's already about 10. I've already taken my shower, made my bed. As you can see, I'm laying back on it, got my pillows and everything on it. But anyway, let's go ahead and get ready. I've already confirmed with the attorney that I'm working with today. And I've uh, confirmed with the actual person who's doing the uh, purchasing of the property. So I will be back. Let's go ahead and get ready. Peace. One of the greatest lessons I learned was right after September 11th, when I had my very first layoff. I had been working at the bank for years, got laid off, and then decided, you know, I'm going to move into a different department after this layoff. I worked there, did a good job, so good to the point that they merged with another bank and had me train the new people on our system. And me being naive, thinking, oh, I am a great employee. They have me training these people. Why would they ever lay me off? <laughs> How naive of me. They sure enough laid me off. So then I went and got another job at the bank. Worked there for two years. Same thing. Bank merged again. Trained the people. They laid me off. I said, okay, fine. Went to the bank again. Got another job. Worked there for two years. And it's so funny. During the interview, the lady asked me, are you here just to get a job because you are overly qualified? And my silly self almost said yes. Thank God someone walked into the office to ask her a question. And when she turned back around to finish the interview, she totally forgot about asking me the question. But I decided at that moment in time, I am not going to allow anyone else to control my financial destiny. When someone controls your financial destiny, they control how much money you make. Therefore, it dictates how much of a home you can afford, what kind of car you're going to drive, where you will send your children to school, what kind of vacation you're going to take. It dictates all of that. And I knew I wanted to be in control of my own financial destiny. Now, I knew running a business wouldn't be easy, but I was willing to do it. And here are some of the benefits for me as to why I started my own business. One is empowering. You know, I took back the control of my own money and not letting corporate America dictate to me how much I am worth. I set the standard as to how much I'm worth. Number two. If I don't want to go to work, I don't work. If I don't want to take any appointments, I do not do it. I have the freedom and the flexibility to do that. I do not have to ask for time off, PTO, any of those things. I'm like, who's going to tell me when I'm going to work? And like the homegirl said, who going to check me, boo? Okay, <laughs> I'm going to do what I want to do. Number three, tax deductions. I get to write off my office space, my car note, insurance, cell phone, gas, mileage, all these things that I'm using on a regular basis anyway, I get to write those things off on my taxes. Four, it allows me to save. It has allowed me to pay off all my debt and become debt free. And most importantly, number five, it has allowed me to realize my many gifts from God, which I would have never thought were gifts. But I always would say, you know, Lord, what are my gifts? You know, I don't sing in church. I don't dance. I don't do any of those things. What are my gifts? And when you study the word of God and you ask him a question, he will lead you to the answer. And he led me to Romans 12, 6 through 8, NIV version. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is to prophesy, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. And if it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. And I know for a fact, one, it ain't a prophesy. That's not me. The Lord ain't gave me that gift that I can't predict no future, okay? <laughs> but definitely serving, teaching, encouraging. It, I do all of that with my heart of hearts. I have mercy on people and on myself and I enjoy doing what it is that I do. Here it is. I'm thinking that the lesson is for me to be get out of debt and out of corporate America. No, the bigger lesson was for me to learn to operate in the gifts that God has given me. You have it. You ever had one of those moments when you're like, I wish that person could be with in me. In a quarter mile. Really? I wish that person could be with me right now so that they can get the lesson that I've been trying to teach them. My nephew is learning how to drive. And I tell him all the time, 
you have to drive for yourself and for that person as well anyway let me make my turn um i'm driving on my way to this appointment and i just so happened to look off to my right i need to look at my seat for something soon as i turn my head back to the left I didn't even turn for like two, it can happen just that fast. I just literally like looked and when I turned my head back, the car, the truck, it wasn't even a car, it was a, um, a street cleaner. I literally had to turn my wheel to the right, get into the medium of the road because he was about to hit me. I'm telling you like my nerves right now and my tongue are still tingling because it happened just that fast. I'm like, this is one of those moments where you're like, I wish that person could be here while I'm teaching them. You have to drive for yourself and that person too. It happens so fast. Cause he's one of those drivers that like, he's, you know, when they're still driving, they're nervous all the time. And you know, when I'm telling him, you gotta look, you can't just make it turns and like, when I say stop at the stop sign and look left, right, left, or right, left, whichever one you start with, you end with. He does this like, like quick look, you ain't looked. How did you look? I've been driving all these years and I know you ain't look because I don't even look like that. We stop it and we look it. Making sure no cars are coming. This boy be like, In a how did you look? You could not have looked. I'm looking at my GPS too. So how could you have looked? Like you can't, You can't, there's no way. But anyway. I'm almost at my appointment. Peace. Okay, so I have like two minutes before my appointment time. And I'm a person, I do not drive with my shoes on. This light sucks. I can't even see my own face. Let me see. Let me come this way. Honey. All right, that's better. So like I was saying, I have two minutes before my appointment. And I don't drive with my shoes on. <laughs> but I always have shoes in the car. Alright? So, when I put my shoes on, before I get there, I'm going right in here, even though the attorney is super, super late. But it's alright. They better be glad my next appointment isn't until 4. And I got time. And um, let's see, fix my hat back. They think, like, these hats, they itch. They itch my head. And uh, get myself back together. So all I have to do when I get out the car... Let's grab my bag with my stuff to work with. Get me a mask. Because what? COVID is still real? Please. I had a cousin recently. A cousin recently had COVID. So, all right. See y'all after my appointment. I would take y'all with me, but I can't. You know, just for one, people's privacy. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to be having people business out there. And two legally you know what I mean but I'll be back peace okay so I'm back in my car like after a minute he meant to text me the address he meant to text me the address to a different house where his witness is going to be and I'm like you I don't have a text from you dude you did not send it to me like I'm sorry I meant to text it to you you better be glad it's six minutes away. Had it been any further, I probably would have had a whole different attitude. But because in Georgia, we're an attorney state, so we have to have attorneys on the line uh, when we're doing certain closings. And uh, certain states require for the person, no matter if they're purchasing, refinancing, whatever, uh, to have a witness. So this person needed to provide their own witness and their at the person's house where the witness is, which is six minutes away from their house. I'm standing at the door, like after I ring that bell, after two quick seconds, I don't hear no movement. I don't hear nobody coming down the stairs. I'm calling, it's cold and the wind is blowing. I need you to come open the door, okay? I, I'm cold out here. <laughs> I need you to come let me in. But anyway, I'll see y'all when I get back from this appointment.
Okay, this is the neighborhood where the closing took place. Being that I couldn't take you guys inside with me, I decided to let you see what the houses look like. But now that the closing is done, I have to do the next thing, which is scan these documents back to whoever um, asked me to do the closing. So I have a mobile office set up in my car because everything is so time sensitive as far as like hurry up and wait. And if you purchased a home or sold a home, refinanced a home, or whether it be uh, commercial or residential, you know how this process happens. Things can change at the very last minute. They want to be able to fund the same day. So I have to scan all these documents back to the bank that asked me to go do this closing so that they can fund this person to get them their money because this was a young gentleman, which I was so impressed with him, um, refinancing on a commercial property that he owns and getting the money out of it so that he can purchase another property and that's how you should do it take the money out of one property take that equity and go purchase another one and continue to build from there so now i sent everything over they called me back and said hey we didn't get the upload of the scan so now i have to stop again pull my laptop out and resend the documents to them now i'm stuck in traffic headed to my next appointment can't believe i did this monday through friday for years it's just crazy to me now now everything is done and now I just need to drop everything at FedEx so that the attorney or whoever ordered me to do the closing can receive the documents. You know, life can, you know, take its toll and do its thing. Honey, sometimes I have to sit in the car and pray. I'm just sitting here praying out loud, talking to God because my brain has gone to a different place and a place of sadness and I need to bring it back. have happened was I was supposed to go to the gym come come back to the house cook my salmon uh-huh and my little vegetables and go to bed and be happy but no the boy forgets to tell me about the prep rally today he better be glad it's at the end of the year because he would have missed it okay because I wouldn't have come back bringing him I'm sitting in the parking lot I'm not going to the gym because for me to go all the way to the gym and come back, I'm annoyed. I'm not going to do that. It's a waste of my time. It's not a waste of my time, but it's a waste of my gas. It's more driving I have to do. I've already been out all day. But anyway, so I'm going to sit here and watch the Cosby show on my phone until he comes out of the prep rally. And then that's just it. I'm done. I'm finished. <laughs> so that's what it's like. And, you know, the chronicles of an entrepreneur who also gets a W-2. All right. Peace. Thank you.